It's all about right here. Look at that. Chilling. This dude now poops in the house every three minutes because he's jealous of this dog. So I'm trying to, you know what I mean? I let him out, but he, his booty and pee is dangerous. What is it, Tino? What is it? Zoom Say it louder. Zoom Baby. Zoom What's up, girl? Manta! Manta! What up, guys? What up? So today, I'm gonna do uh, something different, like tell you about myself. No dogs, no nothing. I want you to know who I am and, you know what I'm saying, what I do and all that. So, my name is Mkini Ndiweni. Israel's my middle name. My dad's a religious dude, so he called me like Keeper of Israel or like the last time I saw Israel. My, my name really means like Keeper and you know, like I last time saw you. Like so many, you would say, man, it's been, you say my name since I saw you in my language, you know what I mean? Or I'm going to, you say my name, keep this dog. Or it's in a sense well, even to like, I keep my family. So it's like keeper, I take care of things or uh, the last time I see you. So it has many definitions. But anyways, yeah, I wanted to tell you like, I, I was born in South Africa, of course. And um, I, was, I wasn't always um, poor or nothing like that. My, my dad actually had, had a house, a car and everything. His family is quite wealthy back there. And um, something happened with his um, with his dad. And uh, one day, you know, they took me to my aunt's house in another country in Zimbabwe. And I was there for like two years. And then when I came home, I never went home. I went to the ghetto, like straight up. So no more car, no more house. And I was like seven, eight, no more, none of that. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm in this, you know, in the Soweto, if you know about it, when Mandela's in and I'm stuck, you know, I ain't got no car, I ain't got no nothing people not accepting me you know because i live in a room that was literally big as an american room like me my brother my dad and my mom and you know it was bad you know i only had shoes for school and um church you know what i mean and everybody there when i would tell them you know like bro i am not broke because they they acted like i was dirty you know like oh you're you're this is how you live and you know you know, even the poor hate on each other. They were poor, but I was poor, poor, because I'm running out of house, a room. It didn't have a bathroom. It didn't have nothing. It didn't even have electricity. So we had to get a cord from the main house to run it through. And even when people called, I used to have to walk in the house to use the phone because there was no cell phone. And I'm going somewhere with this. So I'm there. They're always isolating me, you know, like you're not from here, blah, 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 move, you know, hey, you, this, this, and that. So whatever. I'm, I'm there for a long time. I'm trying to get accepted, but I'm not getting accepted. So I, my parents, you know, they break up because my mom and my my mom becomes a nurse. She, and my dad feels some type of way. African men are like that. They feel uncomfortable when woman has power because, you know, you're supposed to supply your family. But he couldn't at that moment. And he chose not to. He could have went to school or did something, but he, going through depression, whatever happened with him and his dad. So my mom goes to Saudi Arabia. You know, she goes out there, she works there. I'm staying with my dad, living, still going through the same situation. My brother moves in, my oldest brother moves in. Things go bad with them. Um, then I go live with, in, in a boarding school somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I go to the boarding school. I'm stuck there. Like, so when my parents were divorced, my mom's in Saudi Arabia, my dad's in Soweto. When the schools would close, he would not pick me up. Sometimes I would be in a school, like a huge school for three weeks by myself with a security guard because my lazy dad would not come pick me up. I could have been raped. I could have been killed. Anything could have happened. You know what I'm saying? Been there, that boarding school a couple of years. Sometimes, you know, my grandfather would come get me and then he, he started picking it up. Them, you know, hey, this, they leaving you out there. So I started living with my grandpa when uh, I'm not in the boarding school. I moved from the boarding school because my mom now buys a house in South Africa, in South Africa, because now she's got a little bread, you know. So I moved there, but I didn't know she's trying to come here. So she puts me in this all white school. I'm the only black dude. Once again, I'm trying to adapt. They're fucking, you know, hey, sorry for cussing. They, hey, you know, what are you doing here? You know, they thought I was the son of a maid because in South Africa, some maids 
who work for families, they'll let your kid come to the school because it's out of love. Like you take care of our family, we're gonna take care of your kid to go to school. So, you know, so they're isolating me too. What are you doing here? And it's apartheid. Don't forget a couple of years ago, they just first started having a black president. So it's like, you know, what are you doing here? F you, blah, blah, go back to Africa kind of things. You know, just, so I'm just, I'm mad. I'm like, I'm telling my mom, I didn't know I was coming here. I'm telling my mom, like, why you got me out here? You should have left me in the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Like where I'm comfortable, you know what I'm saying? So where I can get along with people, my own people and all that. So at that school, whatever, I'm not doing good. Like I just couldn't, I didn't know the English. I'm learning. I'm trying to pick up the work I knew, but the only hardest part was English. I'm a mathematician. I get it from my pops. You feel me? So I'm, I'm like, why am I here? I'm hating it. I'm hating it. I make a couple of friends. As soon as I get comfortable, boom, it's uh, we leave in middle school. They're like, we're going to high school. Every high school denies me. You hear me? Every, my grades ain't good enough. They were good enough when I was in the black school because I understand, you know, what they're saying, whatever. And, you know, it's easier because I know the language. So there's hard. So I'm like, I'm not going to go nowhere. My friends who hated me, they were like, you know, because they discovered I'm not a son of a maid. They discovered where I live now. Now they're like, oh, shit, he's not. So the hate grows. When people see you succeed, the hate grows. So I'm like, man, whatever. They're, they're like, you know, they show me that, oh, I got my acceptance paper. Like it's college because that's how it happens over there. I'm like, God damn it. I'm done. You know, I'm like, I disappointed my mom. My pops is going to be mad because me and my pops only talk when needed to. I can talk shit about my pops not being a dad, but when shit goes down, that's when he jumps in. That's how he's always been, even as a kid. Even right now, my brother, I'd be like trying to talk to him and he's like, man, this dude do not talk to me. He don't, you know what I'm saying? So he's still the same dude. But uh, anyway, man, out of God's grace, bro, whatever you want to call it. And once again, I'm not forcing nothing on anybody. Whatever you believe, you believe. Whatever entity in the universe you believe came in. Was like, boom, I'll go to like this school. It is a uh, private school, expensive. They teach calling, they teach you how to cook, computer stuff. Man, the best. And now my mom works, you know what I'm saying, in Saudi and she's getting money. So the, I'm in that school. Guess what? Once again, the only black dude. Now they're getting mad because, you know what I'm saying, got the fresh clothes. I'm good. But I was sleeping on the floor because my oldest brother moved in with us like i said on one video so I, me out of respect he's my brother and i look up to him you take my room i'm gonna sleep on the floor and what i liked about sleeping on the floor it was next to the tv we had one tv so like when everybody went to sleep i could stay up and my aunt sometimes catch me but what's she gonna do i can't sleep in my room you know she she can't take off the tv and put it in right it was one of those old school tv so i moved there the teacher to what the hell are you doing here? They try to, so there's a language there called Afrikaans and I started picking it up and I'm passing it. Like they don't get, how is he passing? They don't get like, why are you here? They try to kick me out. They try to do all types of stuff. And I'm sitting there depressed. Mind you, I'm not looking or thinking that my mom's trying to take me to America. I'm taking it as punishment, even the school before. I'm like, man, come on. Even back, you know, when I moved in in Soweto when after my dad and his dad, I was like, man, you know, why am I isolating? You know what I'm saying? And then boom, after a while, my mom's like, yeah, they, they accepted you. We were going to America. It's been five years. And I was like, what? So uh, the teacher there, I don't tell her, you know, she tries to get me kicked out. And then my mom tells her like, man's going to America, you know, cause my mom bought me a PlayStation or something. And the teacher got some type of way, PlayStation 2. And at that time, nobody had even the white kids over there. So she felt some type of way. And when they had the teacher meeting, the mom, they, she told my mom, my mom was like, you know what? Fuck you, my son is going. And you don't know, my mom's only like that. She grew up where she was tortured by white people. She was, you know, she left her house as a teen for like four years with her sisters to go fight, you know what I'm saying, to be free. So her mentality was like, you know, F these people. But she's different now because now, you know, having my wife, it was hard to like even integrate it, but she grew and learned before my wife though, because you know, when you travel and see people, she learned. So she tells him, now the teacher every day, when are you going to America? And I'm like, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? So I finally move here, right? When I'm out here, I go to the black people. Oh, they don't accept me, you're African. Oh, oh, oh. You ain't no real nigga, you know what I'm saying? I go to the white people, they accept me, cool. But they're, they're doing the, oh, don't be around, you know, these black people out here, they're like this, like that. But me being who I am and gravitating to my own people, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stay with the gangsters. So I started doing this, doing this dumb shit, dumb things, I'm sorry. 
doing this, doing that, gang banging, you know what I'm saying? Doing the dumb stuff, stop going to school, you know what I'm saying? The black people just still didn't accept me. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, God damn it. You know, so I change everything. I'm going to the white people. White people now see me. They're like, look at how you look now. We, we liked you back then when you were just simple Israel. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, damn. So with me being with my girl, my mom's like, you know, you got to go. So I go, I'm in the hood. I'm slanging, I'm doing all this. And this is after, honestly, I finished um, college, but I didn't take the test to start respiratory because I'm depressed. You know what I mean? I'm like in this time in my life, like why everywhere I go, I'm isolated. I, I'm not with people who, you know what I'm saying? I I think I'm gonna fit in, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm there, me and my girl, I got a daughter now. I'm doing bad things, you know, going to the clubs, doing all that, whoop de whoop. And then just one day my girl was just like, you know, I'm about to dip, bro. Like we start fighting a lot. And then I think my mom saw that or something because she was like, you know, I'm gonna help you guys get a, a place a little bit. You study, you, you you finish your stuff. And I did, whoop. So I moved to out here in Goodyear from the hood. You know what I'm saying? After my friend got shot in front of me, killed. You know what I'm saying? After I almost got killed. You know what I'm saying? My friend's little brother pulled out a gun on me. I never took it personal. You know what I'm saying? I knew. I knew in my mind why we're a certain way, you know what I'm saying? So I always just tell him like, you know what I told him was like, that gun don't make you no gangster. And he got mad, we fought, it was over with. He's still my brother, you know what I'm saying? And we got over it. We just, you know, I don't mess with, I don't mess with him like that. I don't mess with people like that, you know what I'm saying? So now I go to this job. I'm a respiratory therapist, I'm excited. Huh. I get to the job. They won't let me do shit. I'm the only black dude, not the only black person. It was two black people, a lady and me. I'm the once again, I'm just with the curse. I'm the only black dude. And I'm like, geez, what's going on? And being the only black dude, you know, they, oh, you can't do that. You can't, oh, you're too aggressive. Blah, blah, blah. Went through that. They isolated me. They do it for six years. Somebody would come in and they would get a full time position before me. You know what I mean? It, like it kept going, it kept going. And I asked my boss, hey, what am I doing wrong? What can I do better? You know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. And you know, he was like, nah, there's nothing. It's just, we need this person. So one day I'm a friendly person. I talked to everybody. HR went to HR like, yo, I've been here six years, bro. This dude hired like five or six people before me and I do more than them. And at this time he made me in charge where I tell people what to do. I'm a night manager now. So I'm like, how am I a night manager doing five people's jobs and telling people what to do and I'm still not full time? I'm about to dip. I'm just letting you know, I'm about, my boss gets mad. I talk to my boss, he's like, I'm gonna talk to see if I could get you full time. I tell him I'm going to HR, which I already did. So I was like, he's like, oh, when he gives me the position, he's like, why'd you go? And, you know, they, I'm not going to say things here because I don't want to, you know, put my press. But he told me things that he was telling me at that time he was doing that he wasn't doing. Because when I asked HR, they didn't know nothing about it. Whatever. So now I'm cool. But it comes back to this. That whole time I was isolated, I thought I was, you know what I'm saying, being attacked and being taught the wrong thing. But the God, the universe knew I would be in a foreign country with no family, with nobody and alone. And I had to learn to be alone, learn to do things on myself because, you know, what I'm saying it knew the universe knew one day. That's why I was isolated back there. That's why I was, you know, what I mean, but now I see it. My whole point is sometimes you don't see things you thinking, you know, oh, why I'm by myself or why this sometimes you don't see things that. It's leading you somewhere. It's taking you somewhere to a place that you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? All those dudes in high school who were, who are just throwing me out, they call me asking me for money, asking me how you do this, how do you become a family man? All those people in South Africa who would hate hey, you know me, they see me on Facebook. I had a big ass wedding. I went out there, man. I was like a celebrity. Everybody just came and my wife got mad because I said, even though I love these people, these were people that I was underneath. These were people that I was living in their house, begging them for food, trying to be their friends, trying to be their family, even my own family who, who didn't believe in my mom because when my mom became a nurse, everybody got jealous and left her stranded. Like, yo, you gonna handle yourself with your son and your ex-husband, you know what I'm saying? So she was like, why are you not happy? But I never told her that. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you, the same people who are laughing at you now, why are telling you ain't nothing now? They're gonna be there watching you eat. And it's not that they be beneath you because you're in your own lane. They in your own journey too. So it, it it just comes back to even now, like saying, 
in the dog game. I try to hit up a couple of people, not to join, nothing, for information to learn, especially about the Camelot. And dudes that will, eh, I'm gonna hold the information or act like they better. But mark my words, give me two years. Mark my words. I just know myself because it's like a pattern. I've noticed God works with me in the pattern because everywhere I've been, everywhere I do, you see even here, I started off slow, but everything else is coming together and I'm serious and you will see what I mean. I'm gonna give you an example, another example. There was a man named Adolf Hitler. Most people don't know, he came into office, voted in just like everybody else. But when he came in, Germany just came, was in World War I and they, they blew up Europe. So now they're taxing them 90%. So if you get 900 bucks, you know what I'm saying? You're only getting, what, 90 bucks. And the, the other money is going to, to, you know, other countries to do this. So as Hitler came in there, he said, man, he goes to the UN like, bro, there's videos of this, like, bro, let me, you know what I mean? Can y'all cut, cut it out? It's 90%, we can't grow, we can't do nothing. So they were like, nope, they wouldn't shake his hands. So he keeps going back. They're like, no, we're, you know what? Now we're going to take your cars. Now we're going to take your clothes. Now we're not going to trade with you. And then now we're going to isolate you. Guess what happened? When they took his cars, he creates VW. That car, he didn't make it because he was a genius. He made it because he was forced to. And then even that clothes you wear, cotton, you know what I'm saying? That's not cotton, but it's a fake cotton. He made it because he had to adapt. And then he started being into power. You know the whole story. And that's why he started, you know, messing with Jews. It's not, you know, there's a theory or a conspiracy thing that the Jews own the banks. That's why that man did what he did. Because they were taxing him and they shut him down. You know, you think it's about racism. Yes, he was a racist too, because power does that to a man. And I'm not saying he's good. Thank God he got stopped. But he is who he is because of those situations. Learn to isolate yourself. Figure out who you are and you will go far. You know what I'm saying? All that time I learned who I was. I never noticed that. I learned who I was. So when I'm around people, I know who to go to, who not to go to. I know, you know, what my aura likes. I know even my kids. My kids don't go to school. They homeschool. We don't celebrate no holidays like that. We don't, there's a lot of things we don't do and my kids are happy and normal. And it's things that I've learned. You know what I'm saying? So my whole point was this. I was telling you who I am. But at the same time, I'm trying to tell you, like, if you feel like nobody's accepting you or you your things are not going right, trust me, there's, there's a reason. You know what I mean? The universe is working with you. There's a reason. It's going somewhere. It's not just for fun. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I always thought like, man, you know, like my mom, I'm like, why am I in these white schools? What's going on? And she knew the whole time she was going to bring me here. And then the universe knew when I come here, my mom would be living in Atlanta and I'll be over here. I don't got no brothers. I don't got nobody. My brothers don't check on me only when they need bread. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now they do because I don't know, because I think they know I know. You know what I'm saying? People at home don't hit me up to see how my family's doing. People at work don't like me. You know what I'm saying? My friends don't like me because I was supposed to be the loser. Now I'm doing my own thing. They come around, but they don't like me and they think I can't feel it, but I know it but I'm comfortable in my own skin. I know who I am. So you too, take the separation, learn who you are, man, and become great. And great doesn't mean you have a lot of money. Great doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying, you, you, you're you rich or great, you're famous, or you, you, you know, you look good or this, no. Great is you handling your standards, just like a dog, if you have standards. But you know what my standards was? Never to live in a room again with no bathroom with no toilet, with no nothing. And then you know what my other standard was? I figured out I have my father's heart. And even me right now with my father, the same father he was like rejecting. I went back home and I was getting married. He told me I'm not his son. He wouldn't come to my wedding. And I understand as a man because you feel like you didn't raise me and you know, my family, you know what I'm saying? Like coming to the, to the, to the wedding probably felt like my mom's trying to stun on him, you feel me? But I know what he went through with his father and he cut his father off and it scarred him for the rest of his life and he is who he is. But I learned like, I'm not gonna do that. I love my father, I embrace my father. He's taught me more than he will ever know. You know what I'm saying? When my mom left to Saudi Arabia, me and my father used to be together for hours. You know what I'm saying? And there was no computers, there was no none of that. And it was in a closed room with no window. So we talked, he teach me stuff. He put expectations in me and you know what I'm saying? To be a man, 
And that's what even here I'm about. Fuck these dogs, man. I'm sorry about the language. Fuck the money, man. I'm here to tell you, man, you can do it, bro. There's a reason. Don't break. Have a straight back. Sit up straight. Do shit right. You know what I'm saying? Like, be a man. Be a woman. You know what I'm saying? Have standards. Most people are not around you because you have standards. You see, people are not around me because I demand respect. And I'll give respect. I demand what I want. And I'll give what I want. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm not going to tell you respect me and then or do this for me. And I don't do it even with my wife, bro. You know what I'm saying? We get at it a lot because I have expectations. And even though she doesn't like it, she can't get away from me. You know what I'm saying? Because she knows I'm being real sometimes. Yeah, I am a Taurus. I'm ignorant. I, Like I said, I talk too much, as you can see here. But you use the information or don't use the information. No dogs today. It's just real talk. That's about it, man. It's Zulu Nation, baby. Learn to isolate. And once again, I never said Adolf Hitler was good. No, I was just showing you how the man rose to power because they put him in a corner. And when you put something in a corner, it's either two things are gonna happen, fold or they come out swinging. Let me tell you, you know what? The last one I'm gonna tell you, Shaka Zulu, where my bloodline comes from, where I'm from. So he was a product of cheating his dad was a king cheats on the queen they have the baby she names him shaka so when he'd come around people would be like isolate him too yo you're a son of a whore you're a son of a whore you're not royalty wow wow you're a son of a whore you're not royalty grows up becomes a savage and learns new war tactics M implements him to his crew goes and kills mm. most of his brothers and he didn't want to kill him he just said i've won join or die and the same dudes who was telling him his mom's a whore he's this this and that you know what i'm saying became his you know people that follow him so sometimes you gotta do that shit you gotta do what you need to do and you know he was a dictator too but a great man because he was trying to stop people buying slaves from over there he would kill the slave buyers and when they killed him actually slave slavery became rapid over there and he took over half of africa man Isolate, bro. Isolate yourself. It'll force you to do things that you've never done. See things about yourself you've never saw. It's like, it's like, would you rather be at peace at a at a field like this and controlling your life? You know, like at a field like this? Or do you think somebody who's in Vegas with lights everywhere distracting them? Hey, come in here, come in the strip club, come to this bar, come over here. Isolate yourself, man. It's cool to be alone. You know? Halala, halala san bongela, halala, halala san bongela we.